Hi, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about <coughs> uh, using grid lines in order to place items using CSS grid. So I have sort of a basic 3x3 grid laid out here. You can see the HTML structure here is just an unordered list and then every list item is a grid item and then each grid item um, you know we've set uh, the grid so our unordered list has uh, got a class of grid so I've set that to display grid I have just repeating three columns um, this could be two columns or you know whatever you want it to be I'm just gonna go with three columns because it'll be uh, it gives us a few more lines to play with <clears throat> and then uh, there's a gap between them, there's a border, this this border here, all the way around it. And then there's just a maximum width so that I can show you here a little bit more, uh, a little easier. And then each grid item, grid item has a little padding and a background color and a little border radius. It's no, uh, no massive setup for each of those. But what I want to do is show you how you can change um, the size of each grid item based on grid lines. Now, what are grid lines? Every grid has lines. So you can see here that this is our grid. And when we click on or roll over in our dev tools, um, the grid, you can see that our grid comes up up here. So if we inspect it, this is our grid right here, the green. <coughs> now the grid, you can see is laid out with uh, one, two, three columns, that's what's in between. But the grid actually starts right here. And there's a grid line, uh, sort of an implicit grid line here. That's grid line, uh, that's the column line. So there are lines for columns here. There are four of them. And there are lines for rows. So there's one there, one there, and one there. So there are three, three rows. Uh, three lines for the rows and we call those <coughs> grid column and grid line so each uh, each grid item has a start and a finish so the grid column start for item one <coughs> is line one and the grid column finish for line one or item one is line two the grid uh, uh, column start for item two is uh, grid line 2 and the grid column end is grid line 3 and same thing for item 3 the start is line 3 and the end is line 4 so it's a little bit um, conceptual at this point so let's just take a look at them and manipulate them and we can start to see how those things work so I have each of these uh, called item one, two, three, four, five, six, so that we can pinpoint each one specifically. So if we say item one, and we want to make it grid, column, start, and then we also have a grid, column, end. Okay, so we have two, uh, two properties here, and the grid start we're going to say is one, and then we're going to make the grid and uh, grid column in two. Now you can see that this doesn't do anything because that's uh, what the default is set up to be. They're each set up to take up one space out of this three because it's evenly distributing our items across three uh, columns and each one has the same amount of space. So that's going to determine how wide it is, but the three here, uh, determines how many there are. Okay, so <coughs> we can see it in action if we say we want this one, uh, item one, to start at um, grid line one on the column side, and we want the column to end not at two, but we want it to go all the way to three. So we want grid item one to take up all of the space from grid column line one to grid column line three. And then what this is a, in effect going to do is because we haven't determined where any of these other ones are placed on the grid, it's just going to lay out the rest of them 
along this three column grid. So item two is going to be pushed here. Item three is going to be pushed down. Everything's going to be sort of pushed a little bit farther along. So let's make that change. And so now you can see that grid item one goes from grid column start. It's going to start at line one. It's going to end at line three. Remember this is sort of an invisible line right here that you can see. So this is line three. This is line four. So if we change and you can see that everything got pushed along sort of pushed farther to the right and then back down and back down. So it's going to keep creating three columns because that's what we've set out uh, as our our template is a three column layout. And then if we push this all the way to four, it'll take up all. So it starts at uh, line one, it ends at line four and sort of bypasses two and three, right? So it takes up all that space and then it pushes everything excuse me, it pushes everything else down. Uh, so two, three, four, five, six. Same thing if we wanted to come to item two. And let's say we wanted to say grid column start is one and grid column end is three. Now our item two is going to take a, it's going to go from the column line one to column line three. And then again, pushes everything else down. So you can see that you can create uh, some really interesting uh, layouts here just by changing where your column starts and ends, uh, which line it, it starts and ends on. Um, we also have the ability to uh, change the row. Uh, so remember we have grid column lines, so one, two, three, and four. We also have grid rows, so one, two, three, and now we have four because we pushed everything down. Uh, so this is also sort of a dynamic, um, a dynamic number because it's, it's changing based on uh, how many rows we actually have. So let's go to uh, let's go to item three, and we'll say we wanted to take up from uh, grid to start at grid column line one two three, and end at four. So that's what it's initially going to do. But we want it to uh, start from let's say uh, let's say grid line or grid row two um, down to four. Okay, so it's say item three and then instead of grid column start we're going to say grid row start so which row should this start it should start at line number two and then we'll say grid row end and we want it to end at row four mm. is it going to let us do that Maybe this one is a problem. Okay, so this one was causing some issues there. But you can see, and even if we if we undo this, uh, we can see. Actually, we need that, huh? Okay, so we can see it better here. So it's starting, so this is grid row uh, line one, row line two, row line three <coughs> um, <coughs> because we've got uh, sort of a strange let's go ahead and make this uh, do grid column start let's go ahead and just implicitly put this or explicitly put it somewhere on the grid we want it to start at three and go to four. So let's see if that gives us what, okay. Yeah. Anytime you explicitly tell the grid to do something, uh, to, to make something start or end in these particular places, then it's going to flow all of the other elements around it. So you're starting to get kind of a, 
a crapshoot. So this is like, you can think of it as like a stationary object. And these three, because we haven't added any sort of uh, special uh, instructions about what to do with them, these three here are just sort of floating around. <clears throat> Wherever they can find enough space to get into the grid, that's what they're going to do. So it can sometimes cause some, some issues. You could see we needed to explicitly put this one right here, which is the layout I was looking for. Um, <clears throat> that way these items could flow around it. Um, so, so this one is explicit, this one's explicit, this one's explicit. These three are what we call implicit. So they don't have an explicit uh, direction about what to do. So they're just sort of falling in line around the other ones as they have space. <clears throat> so there's space here. Um, this one is pushing everything down, but it's also, there's only enough space here uh, for two. We can't fit all three. So instead of coming here, this one's pushing everything down and it's forcing this one to another line. So you can see now we have one, two, three, four, five lines. Um, so that if we made this all the way down to row five, uh, you can see that the, there's actually a line here for, uh, for line five. Grid row end is at line five. Okay. Um, so if we pull that back up to here, you can see if we did two to three, then this one fills in because it's not pushing anything down here. So you can see how when it takes up this amount of space here, then it forces this one to float to another line. So you can see that again. Uh, so it comes down and it's like a rock. So a rock is going to push something out of the way. And so it pushes it, this floating piece, it pushes it down to another line. Um, <clears throat> and then you can see, you can see the changes here. Uh, you can see that our column, now our grid, <coughs> our grid looks a little bit different. Uh, so there are one, two, three, four column lines, and then one, two, three, four, five row lines. Uh, and that's because we've explicitly placed some of these items uh, onto <coughs> onto the uh, to the grid. Um, so hopefully. Uh, that's an understandable explanation. Uh, you can place items if we wanted to go to, let's say, row two or uh, item number two, and we wanted to explicitly tell it where to go. Let's say we wanted to uh, make it go down. We just need some we need some uh, some space here. Okay, so you can see that we can do a column start and end here, <coughs> so that this one is taking up uh, two rows across, and also, I mean, two rows up and down vertically, and also two columns. So you can create some special uh, sorts of sections uh, that are going to adhere to a special grid structure. Um, so this is using column start and column end uh, to determine where a grid cell is going to start and where it ends, and then where a grid row is going to start and where it's going to end. Um, if we made this five, then you would see uh, it pushes everything down and these, these now have enough space not to come back this way. They come back as far as they can and sort of bounce off and bounce off and then this one is left with no space on this row. So it has to go down to the next row. And because it, it's only explicitly going down to uh, grid line five, the row line five, then this is the next available space. So the grid is going to adapt and um, sort of make itself uh, flexible based on whether there are implicit or explicit elements uh, on the grid. So this is one cool way to sort of uh, create a little bit of a fixed layout, but also have the flexibility for things to just sort of fill in uh, as you go along. Hopefully this is, <coughs> uh, you can understand it and just play around with it a little bit. In this particular example, I'll leave the, uh, 
I'll leave this code pin down in the, the description below. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the descriptions and I'll get to them uh, as quickly as I can. And um, I have other uh, grid, I have another grid playlist that sort of goes through the basics of CSS grid. This is the intermediate. It's not the total basics of grid, but uh, it sort of is the next step after you grasp uh, sort of the basic understanding of CSS grid. But this allows you to create, you can see some very unique uh, types of layouts and then you would be able to sort of fill in content inside of these and they would be bound by these parameters that you're giving them uh, as far as the layout is concerned. So it's both flexible and provides you a little bit of stability and uh, structure to your grid itself. All right, uh, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.